Alright, I've got my script here for randomizing objects, and I've got a, a few few example objects and scenes to test it with. This is my uh, lovely brick wall. I'm going to use that as my test subject for the top half of this script. In the bottom half, I'll demonstrate with this brick wall and with a, a tree, a paint effects tree I've got. Alright, so basically in this script, you've got the top line here, which has a few options, world and object space. Pretty self-explanatory, lets you choose uh, what to move your object according to. Uh, absolute positioning uh, or relative to where it was. This applies to translates, rotates, and scales. And then uniform, that basically uh, mainly I put in there for, for the scale attribute. Which uh, basically, instead of scaling X, Y, and Z randomly and separately, it allows you to scale the entire brick proportionally to itself, but randomly to its you know selected neighbors. That'll make more sense when I show you. All right. So for the translates, uh, these little buttons here are presets. Uh, you can zero your numbers out, and you can type it in manually, or you can just use uh, presets. You can add, subtract, uh, or zero out. So let's go with point one. I'm going to go ahead and select all my bricks. And right now they're pretty even and linear, which which is bad. Uh, NCG, anything that's straight or linear usually looks fake. So we can start off by... Uh, actually, let's go ahead and start off with Z. Uh, put in a negative point 0.1 and a point 0.1. Uh, basically what that's doing is pushing the bricks in and out. If you look at it from a glancing angle, you can see that, and uh, that that's something bricks do. Maybe not to that extent, unless you know it's an old ruined building uh, and the bricks might be falling out. You might even have a few missing. Uh, but basically, you get the gist. If you want to move them up and down or left and right, X and Y will uh, accommodate that. So let's do negative point zero five and point zero five for Y and the same for X. Alright, it's going to hit randomize a few times and uh, as you see it did a little bit. Subtlety is sometimes key uh, but that that's basically uh, how it works. One thing to note about this script is still a work in progress. Uh, I'm by no means an expert scripter. I'm just starting to get into things here a little bit and uh, it's not perfect. So keep in mind that when you use this script, it's actually creating an undo for every single object. So if you have more than, say, 30 objects selected, and you run this, and your undo queue is set to 30, you're not going to be able to undo back to where you were. So please, uh, save, the, save the scene file, <laughs> or duplicate your geometry that you're working with, or in this case, uh, freeze your transforms before you start, because that will let you simply go back to your starting position by keying in 0 or 1 or or whatever whatever it is okay now I got that out of the way I am going to work on fixing these things but currently this is where it's at and I want it to be available to you or at least show you a and that's, uh, that's what it's going to be for now uh, for rotates it's the very same thing just hit randomize and you know it randomizes your rotates scale works the same way uh, bricks are generally not all the same size and shape so uh, that basically lets you scale them in different proportions again if I check uniform and I, I randomize scales they're gonna stay the same shape but they're gonna be different sizes this might be desirable this might not that's why the options there alright there's another problem in CG um, when you apply a texture to all these bricks they all look the same because uh, I duplicated them and that's not usually desirable not if you're going for realism because most bricks uh, that I've seen don't look the same because they're made out of mud and mortar that differs from every single time it was made so uh, instead of selecting objects at random by hand and applying different materials to them I thought, you know, hey, why not apply them to the same texture but move them around on UV space so that they cover different parts of the texture. Basically, that en enables you to uh, just have a really big texture with variation and uh, uh, your objects 
can just be moved around the UV space and they'll all look different. I wrote a script for that because doing that by hand is not something I don't think anybody wants to do. Not especially for a hundred or a thousand bricks. So let me open up the UV editor here. And as you see, uh, all these UVs are overlapping. They're exactly the same. And that sucks. We want to fix that. So down here in random UV array generator, uh, you have divisions. Basically, divisions is basically dividing your UV space into however many numbers is here. So two would mean it's a two by two grid. Uh, in fact, two by two grid would look just like the squares that you see in the background. Uh, red, black, teal, and blue. Uh, three by three would be similar, but you'd have three squares across and th three squares up and down. Basically, this is telling the script to uh, lay out the the UVs in one of those nine places, or in, in two's case, four. So let me go and show you. Padding is just the distance that you give yourself between UV shells. Uh, I usually put that at zero unless there's a reason to put it up, but I click this button. The script will run, and when it's finished, you're going to have a much cleaner, much more diverse, random uh, array of colors. Much more appealing, much more appealing to the eye. Uh, you can make this three, whatever you want. It's just going to divide it up evenly and give you a nice result like that. Okay. So I'm going to go and hide that and bring out the tree. Uh, the tree is a good example of when you really need this. Trees, paint effects trees, all the UVs are laid up on top of each other and while that's very convenient uh, after you make that a few times and texture those a few times you start to realize that your leaves all look the same and, and that added subtlety of, of variation really really pushes realism in my opinion. So the second button down here is for randomizing UVs that are combined into a single mesh. Um, the first button is for multiple objects. Uh, I won't leave the UV editor open for this because it doesn't function nearly as fast with it open. Uh, real quick, I'm going to change the setting and paint effects. Um, the reason I'm changing segments in the leaf to one is because if you have anything more than four points and four edges in your leaf, per leaf, it's going to take a lot longer to calculate. It's just because it's got to do a few extra steps, and if you can avoid that, then by all means do it. I wrote the script to where it would handle, you know, complicated pieces of geometry, but it's just going to take infinitely longer, and you may want to set it to go overnight because it'll it'll take a while. All right, so like I said, we've got our UVs; they're all in the same place. You have your divisions to what you want, padding to what you want. Hit randomize, and uh, it's going to do its thing. And if we look in the UV editor, we've got a grid, nice little grid. Uh, if I go in the hypershade and apply our same uh, material, you'll see that it's it's randomly divided up the UVs to uh, basically give you more variation. So that's basically it. That's basically all there is to it. And uh, one last thing I want to show you. Uh, the vertex randomizer, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, especially since you've already seen the above areas. But say I smooth uh, this cube, give it some divisions, and then I select all the verts. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a plus point one. You basically can randomize uh, UVs. Give yourself a little more organic feel if you're making a rock or, or whatever. One thing you can do is uh, smooth it once, subdivisions that one, uh, run the script a few times, then smooth it again, and you're basically iterating on itself. And it might give you a little more organic look if you're going for rock or something like that. But that's that's all there is to that. You can choose X, Y, or Z. It's a local space to the vertex, so it's uh, very much like transform component works. Alright, uh, that concludes this demonstration. I hope it was informative, and uh, I hope you find the script useful. Thanks.